Hello, welcome back to the channel. We haven't uploaded in, on this channel in a while because I've been focused on my main channel. If you're not aware of the main channel, it is just called Radix Verum, and I'll include a link in the video description. But I recently did a video on that main channel talking about the collapse of the FTX um, Ponzi scheme, which is what it was. So today I wanted to do a video on this channel talking about another um, major crypto that I think is also close to collapsing or could be uh, a, a very similar situation. So we'll go ahead and get into that. And by the way, I will include um, in the video description the link to the video I put out yesterday on the main channel talking about FTX, Sam Bake. Bankman Freed and uh, that entire situation, scandal, whatever you want to call it, some of us feel vindicated. Some of us recognized uh, XRP and FTX and all this other nonsense that has been pushed. We all saw it for what it was. Not all of us, but some of us, okay? And we've been vindicated. So I'm not going to gloat about it, but it is what it is, folks. Okay, so. Um, everything that I cover in this video, I will include in the video description, it will be linked. And then, uh, later today, I'm going to do another video on the main channel, uh, exposing some of these finance YouTubers who have repeatedly pushed scams over and over and over again, seemingly engage in illegal activity and get away with it. And if I don't put that out today, it'll be tomorrow. Uh, but that video is coming. I am working on it right now. There's just so many of these guys. You know, <laughs> it takes a lot to uh, to get that done. But so here we have an article from CNBC. Crypto peaked a year ago. Investors have lost more than $2 trillion since. Now that was from two days ago. This is during the FTX meltdown, right? Uh, but that's a... A pretty significant sum of money, $2 trillion. Yeah, it's wild, right? A year after Bitcoin peaked at more than 68,000, it's down below 18,000. The industry has been hit with macroeconomic challenges, market forces, and scandals. What was dubbed the crypto winter earlier this year turned disastrous this week with the spectacular collapse of FTX. You know, FTX appeared to be a slush fund for a political party. Um, Sam Bankman-Fried, the CEO of FTX, was the second largest donor to Joe Biden's campaign next to George Soros. So keep that in mind. In the video I did on the main channel, which I will have linked here, we go into his background, the background of his family and his girlfriend's family, uh, Carolyn Ellison, you know. These people, they don't get to where they are by happenstance. It's not a uh, a chance thing that happens, right? Where you just work really hard and you're in the right place at the right time and you make it. No, these people are promoted. They're artificially boosted into these positions and it is for a reason. A year ago this week, invest investors were describing Bitcoin as the future of money and Ethereum as the world's most important developer tool. Non-fungible tokens were exploding, Coinbase was trading at a record, and the NBA's Miami Heat was just into its first full season with the newly renamed FTX Arena. As it turns out, that was peak crypto. No, that was peak clown world. <laughs> In the 12 months since Bitcoin topped out at over 68,000, the two largest digital currencies have lost three quarters of their value, collapsing alongside the riskiest tech stocks. The industry, once valued at roughly $3 trillion, now sits at around $900 billion. Rather than acting as a hedge against inflation, which is near a 40-year high, Bitcoin has proven to be another speculative asset that bubbles up when the evangelists are behind it and plunges, when enthusiasm melts and investors get scared. Well, isn't that exactly what Michael Burry said? Isn't that what he said to us about why he wasn't going to be investing tons of money into 
crypto, Bitcoin, because it's speculative inherently. It's not a physical hard asset. It doesn't produce anything of value. It's no different really than paper money, you know, than funny money, okay? <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, I was an, somebody who, um, I think this was back during 2018, I was repeatedly talking about tech stocks being heavily overvalued, right? Um, at that point, the FANG stocks accounted for 20% of the entire U.S. stock market, and I said, that's an insane bubble. There's no way Apple, for example, is actually worth $2 trillion. All right, that has to come back to reality because people pump them up. They pump these stocks up, and then they dump them, and then they tell people, oh, buy the dip, blah, blah, blah. It's ridiculous. Okay, so... The 135 million that FTX spent last year for a 19-year deal with the Heat, the crypto exchange with the naming rights, is poised to land in the history books alongside another brand that once had its logo on a sports facility, Enron. Yeah, people are comparing the collapse of FTX to Lehman Brothers, but it is more comparable to Enron. They have more liabilities than Enron did at the time that they collapsed, and um, they've actually brought in the guy that. Uh, dealt with the liquidation of Enron to deal with FTX. So moving on, the point of this is to show you, though, that this stuff is, is like an infection. It's like a contagion that spreads because there, there are other companies that are tied into this. So FTX collapsing does not just affect FTX. You know, it's going to spread to everyone else um that was invested in them so coffeezilla here says breaking block buy says because of ftx collapsing they are not able to operate as usual and are pausing withdrawals this is another disaster so here's block buy. we are shocked and dismayed by the news regarding ftx and alameda we like the rest of the world found out about this situation through twitter <laughs> given the lack of clarity on the status of FTX.com, FTX US, and Alameda, we are not able to operate business as usual. Our priority has been and will continue to be to protect our clients and their interests. Until there's further clarity, we're limiting platform activity, including pausing client withdrawals as allowed under our terms. We will share more specifics as soon as possible. We request clients not deposit to block by wallet or interest accounts at this time. We intend to communicate as frequently as possible going forward, but anticipate this will be less frequent than what our clients and stakeholders are used to. Oh, you don't say. Gee, guys, I'm super shocked. So here's a thread from Look On Chain. What happened to BlockFi? A thread tells you how BlockFi got to the brink of bankruptcy. We just read that statement that they put out. BlockFi is a CFI platform that provides cryptocurrency deposits and lending services. I will tell you about BlockFi from wrong decision to invest in GBTC, loans that 3AC cannot repay in the FTX crash. Wrong decision to invest in GBTC. BlockFi is the second holder of GBTC with 19.85 million shares in GBTC Trust. 500 million in July 2021. They received large Bitcoin deposits from investors at a 5% interest rate and deposited it into GBTC to make profit by high premium. Warning at BlockFi to have uh, 19,852,158 8 shares in GBTC Trust. They borrowed Bitcoin from investors at 5% per annum. They deposited these into GBTC, hoping to capitalize on the premium to retail and make $75 million, but instead now face a 17% discount or $100 million in losses. Mm-hmm. However, due to the reduced demand for GBTC after the launch of three Bitcoin ETFs in Canada, 
the GBTC premium quickly disappeared and a negative premium appeared in March of 2021. BlockFi had to dump GBTC as many investors wanted to redeem their Bitcoin. Even in a bull market, BlockFi lost over 63.9 million in 2020 alone and over 221.5 million in 2021. According to Otteru's analysis, negative operating income, operating income in the past two years alone, they're operating at a loss. Don't forget that in 2020, Bitcoin price started out at 6000 and went to an all-time high of 69000 during 2021. It was a bull run and they still lost money. <laughs> Amazing. Loans that 3AC cannot repay, BlockFi took a big hit when 3AC collapsed. BlockFi was forced to liquidate 3AC's collateral assets. Mm -hmm. Celsius, which also lent money to AC3, went bankrupt in July. Yes, we covered that on, I think, the main channel. BlockFi was spared bankruptcy because... Sam Bankman, Freeman, and FTX agreed to provide 250 million revolving line of credit. But what that really was was simply like a, a takeover, right? A hostile takeover, in a sense. Uh, he's not necessarily um, bailing them out so much as he's trying to spread his power and influence. He's not like a charitable guy as he liked to present himself. Uh, with the FTX Alameda crash, BlockFi came to the brink of bankruptcy. CNBC crypto trader uh, Crypto Manran tweeted that BlockFi had a $600 million plus loan to FTX Alameda and SBF was unable to repay. Unbelievable. BlockFi announced today withdrawals has been suspended due to lack of clarity regarding FTX and Alameda. We have analyzed six wallets of BlockFi on Ethereum and found that he has only 18.37 million left. Unreal. Um, okay, so moving on. <laughs> Tether keeps saying you can trust them. But they haven't produced an audit for years. So what we just covered is, hey, look how bad a lot of these other cryptos are doing. Now let's move on and talk about Tether, the so-called stable coin, right? They haven't produced an audit for years. Their CEO and CFO are hiding. They are being investigated for bank fraud in the United States. If you want trust, get audited. Yes, trust is built over years, but can be lost in moments that's correct so i there's a whole thread here giancarlo davacini the chief financial officer of uh, bitfinex and tether the so-called largest stable coin has not done an interview in over five years gee guys do we think that maybe that's like a red flag he had billions of dollars seized from uh, bitfinex and tether in the past five years for bank fraud and money laundering <laughs> he received billions of dollars that Sam Bankman Freed stole from his investors and customers and facilitated Ponzi scammers. Yep, shocking, I know. Bitfinex Tether was founded by a Ponzi scammer. Bitfinex was first exposed in May of 2013 for crediting accounts millions of dollars with no deposits. Bitfinex and Tether has never been audited and refuses to conduct any form of of legitimate audits. Tether executives have admitted to bank fraud, so take a listen. So you guys don't just have a, a backup bank you can just switch all the USD out transfers to that doesn't use Wells Fargo as the correspondent bank? We do, but they use other correspondents and those banks are afraid to, to test those relationships. So it's a lot of cajoling, it's a lot of work we have to do there are a lot of other we have a lot of other tricks okay so being being the bitcoin business is really about pay, playing cat and mouse with the correspondent banks you know um it's always been that uh, but the problem with be getting becoming big um and also you know we have massive balances that we hold with the banks is that we can't fly under the radar anymore um and that's a problem so <laughs> so we are we are in some senses a victim of our own success uh, oh these are right correspondent banks so it's not to say there's not other paths, um, and we will pursue them, 
you know, there are good long-term strategies to, to pursue. They're just unfortunately nothing that we can implement in a matter of weeks. Did you hear what, what he's saying? <laughs> this is amazing. Now, we do have emergency measures that we can take, take um, advantage of. And we do have other channels available to us, except that ramping them up right now uh, turns out to be difficult because of this other issue in Taiwan of like, there's like a, like right now in Taiwan, there's a moratorium countrywide moratorium on, on banks opening up new offshore accounts. Uh -huh. That's an so even if we want to register some new corporate entities, move some money around, things that we would normally do, we, we just were, all that is slowed down right now for us. So that's uh -huh. sounds that, like bad timing. So. so uh-huh. Bitfinex and Tether was the primary recipient of all the money Sam Bankman fried stole. Sam Bankman fried was essentially a feeder fund to Tether and Bitfinex. Bitfinex Tether is a larger fraud than Sam Bankman fried and is not getting the attention they deserve. Well, that's changing, isn't it? And you've got Alameda Research, who I heard this funny story. Someone told me that um, the name Alameda Research is because you needed a bank license and research is like the most safe thing that you can get yeah exactly right like we knew banks were gonna shut us down because before silvergate didn't exist signature you know there were not yet u.s banks that were happy with crypto instead they're just a lot that did not want to have to fucking think about it yeah and we just knew that was going to be a thing and that if we named our company like shitcoin day traders inc like they that the, they'd probably just reject us for the bank or whatever the teller would accept this cause they don't care but but I mean, compliance just have a field day with that. But I mean, no one doesn't like research. Totally, everyone loves research. So, okay, so yeah. now Alameda, we're a few years later, Unbelievable. right? Unbelievable. Uh, like, and just listen to his voice too. Sam Bankman Freed. You heard the voice, you've seen the physiognomy. Come on now, guys. Uh, Alameda is basically, you know, the Moby Dick of, of crypto whales, right? You guys are responsible for like, I don't know the real numbers, you know these, like 10% of what feels like crypto moving right. in the markets at any one time, um, which, you know, this means you guys have the potential to move markets, cause liquidations. It's, it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, and you never want to be intentionally moving markets. You never want to be doing something. Look at the room he's in too. Look how disgusting. I mean, honestly. You never want to be doing something. Look at this. This dude's worth billions of dollars, but he can't, like, have a decent-looking place. I mean, really? Never trust a slob. Bitfinex and Tether has had five years to put the FUD to bed. Yeah, oh, it's just FUD, guys. Just fear, uncertainty, and doubt. By simply conducting legitimate audit of all of their financials going back to 2017, they will never do this as they've already proven to be a fraud. And they've got linked here, the Tether Reserves USDT was not at all times fully backed by US dollars held in Tether bank accounts. In 2017, there were at least 319 million 398,873 Tether tokens in circulation. By September 15, 2017, there were at least 442,481,760 Tether tokens in circulation. During the same time, the amount held in the GC trust account never exceeded 61.5 million. In fact, Tether reserves were not fully backed the majority of the time. The order further finds Tether failed to disclose that it included unsecured receivables and non-fiat assets in its reserves, and that Tether falsely represented that it would undergo routine professional audits to demonstrate it maintained 100% reserves at all times, even though Tether reserves were not audited. So Tether is called a stable coin, and what they claimed was that for each Tether token, it is backed by one U.S. dollar. So... On the face of it, like, it makes sense. One dollar, one token, right? They're connected, so it, at least that token is worth at least one dollar, right? One U.S. dollar. But that's not the case. It's not backed by a dollar. So you're thinking that it's backed, that there's something there, that in the event something happens, you'll, you'll be able to get your money. No. <laughs> um... 
As found in the order, Tether had sufficient fiat reserves in its accounts to back USDT Tether tokens in circulation for only 27.6% of the days in a 26-month sample time period from 2016 to 2018. So this is going over many years. The order also finds instead of holding all USDT token reserves in US dollars as represented, Tether relied on unregulated entities and certain third parties to hold funds compromising the, uh, comprising the reserves. Commingled reserve funds with Bitfinex's operational and customer funds held and held reserves in non-fiat financial products. The order further finds Tether and Bitfinex's combined assets included funds held by third parties, including at least 29 arrangements that were not documented through any agreement or contract. And Tether transferred Tether reserve funds to Bitfinex, including when Bitfinex needed help responding to a quote unquote liquidity crisis. Moving on. This is an article from Payments, and by the way, I'll, I'll put links in the video description. Tether audit promised for five years, still months away, CTO says. So this was from just three months ago, guys. This is, we're supposed to get this audit, like, since 2016 or 2017. Here we are at the end of 2022, and it's, oh, any day now, any day now. And they've been putting it off for years. Tether has said an audit of its finances meant to assure of its stability could still be months off, according to CTO Paolo Ordoino. Without the basic financial guardrails in place to help protect the funds, crypto companies are having issues showing investors that their money is safe, the Wall Street Journal reported Saturday. Crypto firms don't always publish financial statements, and many don't have anyone checking their books. So even when they're audited, there's no agreed standards for digital assets. One such case is Tether, which rolled out an array of blogs and press releases to promote its transparency in the wake of numerous crypto firm failures earlier this year. They all say that, guys. Even these YouTube finance gurus, that is their talking point. We are transparent. No, you're not. And frankly, you're disgusting. The company has faced questions before about whether its re reserves are sufficient enough, and the journal noted Tether had been promising an audit since 2017. Tether's practice thus far has been to publish an attestation that shows a snapshot of its reserves and liabilities signed off by an accounting firm. We all know, though, that that doesn't really mean much. Audits are usually more thorough, and some crypto companies' attestations sign off on the numbers provided for specific dates and times without testing transactions before or after, making some attestations more positive than the reality of the situation. Tether had recently hired auditing firm BDO Italia to help it provide monthly reports on its reserves, but there are still questions about whether that was good enough to step a uh, good enough step to help soothe concerns investors uh, that investors had dropping 10 billion worth earlier this year when the Terra Luna stablecoin another stablecoin was collapsing tether then saw its market capitalization falling from 83 billion to around 66 billion Though Circle and Coinbase's USD coin saw its value grow to $65 billion. the common belief is that many investors got rid of USDT for USDC, particularly with a Tether stablecoin losing its peg to the dollar for two months. So here's an article from October 31st of this year. U.S. Tether bank fraud investigation changes hands within the DOJ report. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York will now be handling the investigation, Bloomberg reported Monday. A criminal investigation into whether Tether's executives committed bank fraud in the early days of the stablecoin issuer's existence has been reassigned after months of stagnation. You know, if it's regular people like us, like they'll go after us for one mistake on our taxes. But when it comes to something like this, where literally like billions of dollars are at stake, oh, it just, you know, flounders around. 
<sighs> Bloomberg reported in July last year, federal prosecutors have been digging into whether Tether hid the nature of its crypto-related transactions from the banks it was working with during the fledgling days of its business. Responding in a blog post Monday, Tether said it is an open dialogue with law enforcement agencies, helping the department with some of the biggest cybercrime and national security cases in the country. Oh, I bet. And added that Tether executives have had no interaction with the DOJ in connection with any investigation for well over a year, and DOJ does not appear to be actively investigating Tether. Still, the stablecoin issuer has long been plagued by accusations of murky banking relationships and opaque accounting practices. In February 2021, Tether and its sister company, Bitfinex, paid $18.5 million to settle a nearly two-year-long investigation with the New York Attorney General's office into whether it covered up the loss of nearly a billion dollars in customer funds. In the settlement agreement, the New York Attorney General said Tether used various banks but was suspended from some, including Wells Fargo, for unspecified reasons. The SDNY has become something of a hotspot for crypto cases in recent years. Both the Celsius Network and Voyager digital bankruptcy cases are being presided over by judges from that district's bankruptcy court. The Southern District of New York has also developed a reputation for working with other agencies, including the SEC, to bring crypto-centric criminal cases. Former federal prosecutors speaking to Bloomberg speculated SDNY's crypto expertise could be the reason for the unusual decision to move the investigation. Then we have Wall Street Journal, what we know and don't know about Tether's books. After failing and rebounding Thursday, the stablecoin company released its latest quarterly report. This was from just three days ago. Now that Tether has broken the buck again, questions are swirling about whether the stablecoin can maintain investor confidence in the midst of a meltdown in the cryptocurrency market. Tether fell as low as 97.7 cents Thursday, according to Coindesk, after which it quickly rebounded to its intended $1 peg. Paolo Ordiano, chief technology officer at Tether Holdings, said on Twitter it had been processing redemptions with no issues and we keep going. Later Thursday, the company released its quarterly reserves report and included a letter from an outside accounting firm, BDO Italia, that was, hev uh, that was heavy on scope limitations and fell short of a full-fledged audit report. And so they get into uh, what Tether is, why it matters, it's the world's largest stable coin, billed as the non-volatile cousin of Bitcoin and other digital currencies that can whipsaw in value. Its popularity has surged in the past two years as part of a broad run-up in crypto trading and has served as a counterintuitive purpose in the world of crypto. While traders want to speculate on the value of digital currencies, they often only want price movement on one side. Stable coins such as Tether provided that stability plus faster settlement times than government-issued currencies. Yes. So it goes on and you can read the rest of that for yourself. Um, the next article here, uh, Tether fell below their $1 peg. Uh, it was trading at 97 cents on several bourses and briefly fell as low as 93 cents on the Kraken exchange. So it became unpegged from the dollar briefly. Uh, very interesting. And we talked about this in the video I put out on the main channel yesterday. Drowning death of crypto visionary Nikolai fuels conspiracy theories. Now, the reason I bring this up in relation to Tether is because this guy created some of the technology that the stable coins are using. And he died uh, in a very weird way, like right after he tweeted that intelligence agencies were going to torture and murder him, talking about framing him with a laptop planted by an ex-girlfriend who was a spy. This is just so bizarre. The 29-year-old left his 6 million beach house in the Lux Conado area of San Juan, Puerto Rico for a walk after a little after 9 a.m. A surfer off uh, Ashford Beach, a spot so rife with riptides, locals worn against ocean swimming, discovered his body in the waves. He was wearing his clothes and had his wallet on him. The news of his death, coupled with his last tweet, other dark posts about fighting evil people who were part of the central banking cartel, which he claimed used debt and blackmail as weapons, where's the lie, have fueled conspiracy theories online in the tight-knit cryptocurrency uh, community in Puerto Rico. Yes, it was very disturbing. So, 
Uh, you can see the tweet there. So strange. Um, Mushegian uh, was an early developer of MarkerDAO, the largest decentralized finance protocol, and was a key architect of stablecoin systems, currencies without government backing. A person who knew him very well for hour, uh, for years until they had a falling out two years ago, so the developer was very smart but suffered extreme bouts of paranoia. So, um, I don't know that that's true or not. I just know that's what that individual is saying. Uh, so anyways, that's all I have to say about Tether, and um, I think that that could be the next thing to implode, and I think that it may be worse than what we're seeing with FTX. And it, again, this stuff spreads like a contagion, like a virus. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below.